Hi, this is Sarah, this Kitchen Mommy, and it's Monday, March 25th. I just rehearsed that. <laughs> and I'm here for my weekly stitching update. Hopefully this will be a short one because my kids have a half day, so I gotta get going. Um, first off, I, will, I got a package in the mail today from Trisha at Three Owl Threads, and she has a giveaway, I think once a year, around Christmas time to grant someone's stitchy wishes, which I entered at the last minute because <clears throat> at the time I was really far behind and <clears throat> it was actually still open. So I figured, okay, I'll go ahead and enter. Why not? I had zero, like, like a, assuming that I would win assumption. So I just said my stitchy wish would be to have time on my projects and to enjoy the progress that I'm able to make or something you know, ethereal like that. And I ended up winning, amazingly enough, and she said, okay, you won, now give me something tangible <laughs> to go by. So I, I sent her a few ideas and some a link to my wish list. And so that came in the mail this week. The main thing she sent was to let me try needlepoint for the first time. And I realized I do have, um, what do you call it? I do have needle, those needlepoint kits that were like just half stitch, like continental stitches, the, the stocking that I did that I cropped and that cat in the library, those are technically needlepoint. But the needlepoint that I've been seeing since floss tube has been the fancy kind with specialty stitches and fancy floss and that's looked very fun and I wanted to try it. So she decided she would grant my stitchy wish and bought me this pattern called Rosetto and it's by Needle Delights Originals and she also got me one of the fancy flosses. This is Gloriana um, Flowers of Italy. So that's a silk and then a couple of DMC Pearl Cottons. There's some other ones um, that I'll need as well. A lot of these look like solids so I might be able to get away with substitutes but there might be um, if there's any more that are like sparkly or variegated, I'll, I'll see if my local needle workshop has them because they sell needlework, uh, needlepoint things, so they should have some of these brands. So that's exciting. And she also sent me um, 18 count monocloth canvas. And this is a bigger piece than I need for this pattern, so there will be enough to do more than one. So that's really exciting. <laughs> so thank you, Trisha, for granting my stitchy wish. And of course, she didn't stop there. She um, decided to give me a few other little fun things. She gave me some water lilies, which are gorgeous. Pretty, pretty silks. They, I don't believe, they didn't look like they went with this one, with this pattern. And, but they're just pretty. <laughs> so those are really pretty. I love this blue one. And even that brown one, just really pretty. Anyways, if you want the colors, I suppose I can share those. So the brownish, light brown one is Burnished Coin. And then this pinky one is Cameo, pinky peachy gray. This is a lighter one that's blush. It's like creams and really light pink. It's a little bit creamer than it's showing there. And Blue Ridge Mountain is this one. So it's a little purpler for you. It's a little more blue for me, but there is purples in there and greens and pinks and all sorts of pretty things. So these are um, water lilies. Yeah, they are the silks. So I sometimes get confused if things are this. I think it's water, is it water flowers is the cotton versions. So there's some silks. So that's pretty. And she sent me a piece of fabric from her stash that was opalescent. This is Florin 32 count opal linen by Under the Sea Fabrics. So I've never had Under the Sea Fabrics. And this is a really pretty bright peachy coral color. She said she could just see a fancy lady on this. <laughs> So I will have to come up with um, 
which fancy lady or fancy pattern that I sh that that will be perfect for. And then she, since she's a, sh a shop owner, she was able to be at Nashville Market, so she got me a few things from Nashville. She got me a piece of 28 count cash shell from Picture This Plus called Nessie. And it's a, like a greeny bluey, you know, Scottish <laughs> bog. <laughs> Pick a very pretty color. That's really gorgeous. I think it's slightly greener than you're seeing, but it's it's really pretty. A nice greeny blue, and I love this. I love greeny blue colors for um, pretty much everything. <laughs> so I'm sure I will find a good use for that. Possibly a fancy lady, possibly a, here comes my kitty, possibly um, one of the other pretty patterns I picked up over the years that I haven't kitted fully yet. <clears throat> and then she also found and got me these sticker plates from Lindy Stitches, which have um, a place to put the title, stitched by, date, and secret notes, special notes, um, on the back of your finished pieces. So that's really fun. Hey, kitty. <laughs> she loves them too. So she got me those and a cookbook populated with recipes from the designers who were at Nashville, which is really, really cool. So inside here, there is all sorts of recipes, but there are also an occasional, um, occasional free little patterns in here as well. So that's kind of fun. I want to see if there's another one I could show you that without showing you the, so there's some, some little patterns by the different designers. Hi. <laughs> so that's really fun. So thank you so much, Trisha. That was very special. And I'm looking forward to doing all of, using all of these things. I'm not sure what I want to do with my needlepoint, um, with the needlepoint design. If I want to <clears throat> start it this year because it's not cross stitch, it is needlepoint. Oh, kitty. Just knocked a bunch of my stuff on the ground. That's not very helpful. Or if I want <clears throat> to, it, it's somewhat similar to me to cross stitch. So I don't know if I will feel like it's adding to my whip pile in that sense, in which case I probably should wait until 2020 to start it. I also am considering if I want to use stretcher bars to tack it down, which is what you're supposed to do with needlepoint, or if I want to try to do it in hand, which is what I've been doing with um, those kits that I have. With my cat in the library needlepoint, I recently attempted to put it on my cheap scroll frames that I got at like Joann's or something like 15 years ago. I attempted to put it on there and use that because I figured that maybe that would help keep it from distorting with the continental tent stitch that it uses, but I just can't handle it. <laughs> and maybe it's because I don't have a stand. And so I don't know if I get stretcher bars for this, I might also want a lap stand or something, which I don't know. I'm not sure. So it could be done either way because it's on canvas that's very sturdy, so the specialty stitches should still lay okay. But I could see it also being easier to do some of the like really large Jessica stitches when it's all just flat and open for you. So I'm still debating on that and it might depend on how expensive everything is too. So we'll wait and see. Um, now the things I wanted to show you are on the ground. So thanks Kat, and she's sitting here now. Um, I had to dislodge my cat <laughs> in order to do things in order. <laughs> I can't get out of order, kitty. So when I last saw you, I was working on Heaven and Earth Designs Furry Animals freebie. This is no longer available, but it used to be a freebie on their shop. And they don't even have anything like it to buy, so I'm not sure what happened uh, with that one. But it's pretty cute, and I just tucked it away ages ago. Um, 2008 is when I got this one and I pulled it out recently to work to just test some doing diagonal stitching with a half stitch which I ended up not liking because it seemed like it made diagonal ridges like full crosses and columns sometimes does because the stitches are on the half and they follow the di diagonal it seemed like it was making ridges on the diagonal so 
lesson learned. Um, currently I'm doing it cross country and I realized when I was talking about this last week, I was filming on Tuesday last week and I usually film on Monday. So when I was discussing I had two days left on this piece, I really only had one day that, that day because I was looking at my calendar thinking, oh yeah, I got Monday and Tuesday. So I got two days, but I was, it was already Tuesday when I was filming. So I feel like I got more, I know I didn't work on it for one day, but there might've been even another day that I didn't work on it. So I feel like it got shortchanged a little bit this month. Um, but some of the colors I worked on this past Tuesday were, um, larger chunks of color in the floor. So hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit of difference, even though it's one day difference than last time. So this is what it looked like before. And here it is now. And this is uh, 28 count, two over one half stitches. And I always feel like this little guy gets washed out. Not washed out, but like blurred because he's got the darker colors and he doesn't seem to focus, but whatever. So I did work more in these colors because I was completing columns. So this first column is all the way done. And this bottom column, this next column is mostly done. So some of these colors worked all the way across and even a little bit up here. So not done, <laughs> but progress. So that'll probably come back out next month. I'm still debating. I have not plugged anything into April yet. So I'm not sure if I want to do one more month of like planned focus stitching on the different categories before Stitch Mania and then maybe do something different in the summer. I'm not really sure. Really, I have, yeah, I haven't thought about anything <laughs> going forward. So you'll have to wait and see. It's a surprise. Let's see, after Furry Animals, I worked on Stargazer. This is my uh, Mirabilia that I'm focusing on right now. And with this one, I wanted to work in the stars and I got it out a, a couple times, opened up <clears throat> four packages of beads because there's four different kinds of beads in the sky. And I'm using navy thread to match my fabric so I can just move with the flow of the beads and not have to do one color at a time with like matching the bead color or something. So I was, was kind of discouraged because if I only had a, a short time to work on it, I didn't feel like I could get all of the beads out. And I even started a string of jacket color because I had like 10 minutes and I, I knew I can't get all the beads out for 10 minutes. Um, so I just pulled a, th a, a thread and started in on the jacket and then when I had a little bit more time then I went back to the beading. Um, and then I realized, you know what, I've got this tacky bob that Shelly Key X Stitch gave me. Let's see how that works. <laughs> so I put a little bit of all four colors on the tacky bob and it really, really helped. So since I had so many different colors in the same area, if I only have one, maybe two packages, it's easier just to open the package and work from the package. But with this many colors all together and I was going you know, back and forth amongst the different colors, this is really helpful. And it was able also to, I could get it out for just 10, 15 minutes without having to worry about the time to open all the packages and not like carefully to, set them all all down so they're not going to spill. Um, this one I could just open it up, do a few beads, and you know, go on my merry way. So that was really helpful. So thank you, Shelly. I will definitely be using this again. I'm currently just going to keep it with this project for now. Um, but I could see it coming in helpful with other things too at some point. So it's, it's in my bag with all my beads for Stargazer at the moment. which I think technically today is one more day on her. So I, I'll show you what she looks like before I talk about her more. This is what she looked like before. And here she is now. And I always, so here's the beads. You can see they're um, on the nice fabric 
very blingy and that's how far I got on the, the beads. See if I can, yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. And I kind of got beaded out. <laughs> I, it, it was hard to bead on this top area because the fabric was so dark and I think the threads maybe plumped up a little bit in the dyeing process so it was kind of, it was a little bit hard to count so some of these are off and I don't really care because it doesn't really matter. So I think there's like something off right here, there's something off in this one. <laughs> some of these I think are right but they may not be. So if I were, I think I may work on this a little bit more today. And this, this dark burgundy is the string that I put in and I did some more on that last night as well. So I think what I'm going to do today is work some more on her jacket. Like the rest of this sleeve, you know, bits over here. Because I think I'm done with beads for this rotation. <laughs> so that's a nice, the top, you know, few lines are completely finished. There's a few more beads over here and the even some that come down here as well. But I think I'll wait and do those another time and work on her a little bit more. So that's where she's at. And I, yesterday I worked on Dragon Ride by Teresa Winsler and I didn't get a lot of time yesterday as I feared that I would not because there was a lot of extra activities at church. Every other week we have, I have choir practice and night, a night service that I go to with my son and that just takes up a big chunk of the afternoon, evening when I normally could do some other things. And so, um, not as much personal stitching time. But, I got a tiny bit done on this, and I might, I might do a little bit more on this one today too. So we'll kind of see how today goes, if I can get any time on, a little bit more time on both Dragon Ride and Stargazer until I get to a little bit better stopping point. So this is Dragon Ride by Teresa Winsler. This is where I was last time. And let's see, let's get out of the sunspot. Still trying to figure out where, what time is the best time to film now that we've had time change. Because <laughs> it's different than it used to be and it doesn't seem to make sense anymore. So this is where I am now. Not a whole lot different, but I did work on his face a little bit and neck. So I went ahead and just pulled these, I did three colors. So this cheek area and the nose area is all finished. And then those colors, I just worked down his neck until they ran out. And I tried not to have super long lengths and, and just so that it wouldn't take too long to finish them up. There's another color under here in his eye and then there's some other colors in the strap and what is this, like, beard stuff. And then I would love to backstitch some of his face. I think my son would really, really love that. So if I have time, I think there's like one, two, three, four, five, six. There might be five or six colors in all, like, just these little areas. So it's very confetti full. <laughs> um, Um, then if, so I don't know, I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not. And I know, I know some people like to pull card, like floss cards with their blended colors. Um, I don't know. I've never, never been a fan of that idea just because I don't use project bags in general. So some things I do, like my mirabilias, I'll keep in a bag with the beads. So in that sense, I could, but this one currently is just in a project um, report cover and my tube. And everything else is in my master set of DMC. So, I don't know. I feel like it might get, and not to mention that this is the flossless. <laughs> so there's like, almost all of them are blends. But, so, we'll see. And just, just the time consuming aspect of um, starting and stopping your threads is also kind of annoying to me. So if they're on my needle, I might as well go and just finish it out and do as much as I can with that thread. And so 
in that sense too, it's nice. A blended thread gives me an excuse to just keep stitching and I get more progress than if I were to start and stop and waste the time doing that. So I don't know. That's just kind of my thoughts on that. That's what I was able to do this past week. And so hopefully today I'll get a little bit more on Dragon Ride and Stargazer. We'll see. That seems like a tall order, especially if I'm filming and my kids are going to be home this afternoon <laughs> more than they usually are. But we'll see. Tomorrow, should I do plans first? I guess so. Tomorrow I'll be doing H Fairy for my niece by Nora Corbett. <clears throat> so that's one I don't think I got a whole lot done on last time because whatever day it fell on was busy. <clears throat> But hopefully I'll get a little bit more done this time. So we'll see. This is where I'm at with that right now. This is on 32 count water lily. I think it's water lily linen. This is the called for linen. Yeah, water lily. And man, that sunspot is really messing me up. That's better. So there are some beads up here that I would like to finish so that I can have the top done. And then I'll figure out what comes next. Like there's some beads in her hair and these like leaves, you know. So I'd like to like finish the top from the top down. Last time I just worked on this, the letter H a little bit because it was on my needle already and that's all I had time for. But I would like to go back and do some completing so that it can be done from the top down. So there's, there she is right now. We'll see how much I can get to um, on Tuesday, tomorrow. And then it is another rotation of Midsummer Roses, which will be five days on my oldest whip. So there that is. This is probably 23 years old or something like that. And I'm closing in on a finish, but it won't be this month. I'm, you know, guaranteed. But here it is now. Some of these things are so curly. It's helpful to put them against something. So here this is now. Let's go over here. <laughs> it's my nemesis, the sunspot. I remember having videos previously that were like this, but I, I couldn't wait because my my kids get out, out early today. So this is where it's starting from. I have two more colors of green in the leaves to do, and then I will work more on the background so that I can start backstitching. And backstitching is no joke, as you, there's already, this part is already finished, you know, so there's each color of flower has a different color of backstitching. The leaves have a different color of backstitching. The wood has a different color of backstitching. This probably has a different color of backstitching. So, it's uh, thorough, <laughs> but it, it looks really nice. So there's lots of fractionals in there. This is on 14 count Ada, antique white probably. So you can do fractionals on Ada. And that's where it's at now. So I'm, I'm much more encouraged after I've started working on the leaves that it's really making progress. So five days on that, we'll hopefully see some progress. At the very least finish those leaves but it would be nice to get some significant progress on the background as well and the background is there's a lot of it but it's not that bad like I have most of the stitching done in the lattice already and this part is just a few colors so hopefully it won't take too long because it'll be bigger blocks so we will see how that goes and after that, it goes into April, but hopefully I'll still be able to come back next Monday and film. My kids will be home for spring break, but I can probably put on a show for them or something and still get a video made. So, like I said, I don't have any plans for April. So, hopefully sometime this week I'll sort through what I want to do. Likely, I'll stick with my six daily things. So, the first and second will be my husband and son's piece, like always. And then the rest of that first week, I'll have to decide. I'll have a four-day chunk before I work on my fairy. So I'll have to decide what I want to do with that. If I want to continue to do 
this idea where I have Golden Kite, Heaven and Earth, Mirabilia, and other with some smaller chunks and then a 9 to 10 focus piece, which I think will be my Midsummer Roses. I may still stick with this, and in which case I may... I'm debating if I want to do Knitting Woman for my Golden Kite. I might just look through all my Golden Kites and see which one is calling to me the most. Because Knitting Woman, I love the picture, but the there's a lot of brown in it right now, and it's not the most fun to stitch. So I'm, I'm wondering about looking through all my Golden Kites and finding one that is calling to me a little bit more. So we'll see. I may work on Knitting Woman for Golden Kite. I may work on something else. And the Hade, I should probably keep working on Furry Animals because that, that needs to get done. It's, it's really cute. It's really close. And I kind of felt like I was starting to make traction on it this time. I just didn't have a lot of days. So that one, I should keep that one in the rotation too. Let's try to get some more finishes, shall we? So, travel stitching. I worked on Hoot by Bent Creek. This is for my daughter's kindergarten teacher. And I'm converting all the colors to things that I already had. So pretty much none of them are called for. So this is what it looked like before. I've made some good progress this week. Here is where it's at now. I went ahead and finished this A so that I could count up to these leaves a little better. And then I also got the start of the owls finished. This is Sweet Orange by Victorian Motto. And these leaves are the Eliza Bell Cox 934. It, it called for DMC 934. So that's almost the same, but it's like a wee bit variegated because it's a Victorian Motto version of 934. So... Um, I have grits on my needle, ready to go in the valley line today, so I will start working on the white on the owls. And I don't have as much, I won't have as much travel stitching time now that spring break is coming. So, I will have to see if I get more caught up on the temperature quilt, I might do some of this at home throughout spring break, but I still am not caught up on temperature quilt, so I may need that time. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, I'm not sure how much love this will get until the second week of April because of, um, because I won't have the valet line to do it with. Let's put that over there because I need that pretty soon here. Four minutes, gotta go. <laughs> so it's real quick, show you my temperature pieces. My temperature quilt, which I told you I'm not caught up on. I did make progress. So that's what that is eventually you look like, something like that. This is what it looked like before. And here it is now. This is on light blue even weave, 28 count, one over one. And I've finished several of these blocks. These ones don't have their highs stitched yet, and those will be greeny. And I realized this one I did wrong. It should be a brighter green, a lighter green. And I, because it was the same color, the same temperature as one of these. And I was noticing that, hey, that's a color I haven't used before, but I had that temperature before. So I did this one wrong. So I went ahead and picked it out, because I'm a purist. So I'll have to add that back in. And I think I have days up through here. So I'm gonna have to fix this, put bring the sashing down farther as well before I can keep going too far. But that's where my quilt is now. And I am doing like more than Normally I would do two blocks every day because I'm working on these every other day. So I am doing more than that each day to try to get caught up. But every once in a while I don't have time for it. So eventually it will be caught up again. And then my other one is temperature balloons. And we're, this one is mostly caught up. I'm, I am, am staying up on this one because it's a little bit less daunting with only one color per day. I have a fuzz. And this is what that looked like before. And here it is now. So I got the bright color. Um, that's the fuzz I took off. And then a few more, it got cool again. And all of these purple days were 57 degrees. Like not even just a different color in the same range. They were all the exact same temperature. <laughs> I'm like, really? Come on, let's get more creative than that. But. It was nice having a few extra colors and a little variety in there. 
we it'll be somewhat warmer and then we'll get a little bit more rain it always seems to rain every Wednesday now for the last couple of weeks so that's kind of the thing um, but it is still generally a lot cooler in Southern California than it has been previous years but it's actually not a drought year anymore so it's it's a good thing we're getting a lot more rain and we could use it so I believe that is all I have for you today oh yeah and because it's spring break I also want to finally get out my puzzle the stitching shelf puzzle it's still unopened I got this for my birthday last year I think and I have a teacup puzzle that I got for Christmas and they're both here unopened this one is 2,000 pieces but this one my daughter really wants to do with me so I think on spring break that will be a good time to get it out and have it here and so that will take a little bit of my free time but I think it'll be a nice project to work on with well my daughter's home so that one I'm sure will go a lot quicker than my stitch in time cross stitch <laughs> So with that, I believe I have to go now. So I hope you have a wonderful week of stitching and enjoy the come of spring or fall. And happy stitching. Bye.